Hey guys, Sheila Texter here with B Ministries, where every week I put out videos and content to share with you my writing journey as an author. I'm an evangelist, a pastor's wife, I'm a life coach, inspirational, motivational speaker, and my goal today is to inspire somebody to help motivate you in the things of God and the things that God has called you to do. If that is something that you are interested in, I ask you to subscribe to my channel, like it, share it, comment on it, and help me get this out there. You know, uh, every week I try my best to come on here and share with you whatever I feel in my spirit or my heart for the week. And then I have been reading out of my devotional so I'm an author as well, and I have wrote uh, four books, and I'm writing my fifth one now, but it's actually, it's my third devotional, but I also have a memoir, Life After the Mistake, and I have an ebook that is on Amazon for $3.99, How to Be a Writer, and it's just, it's probably about 10 of some of the most important to me they were the most important things to me as i began my writing journey things that i learned along the way now to say that it's everything that you're going to need to know no but i'm telling you i wish that i would have had a book like that to read maybe before i started and i probably would not have made some of the mistakes that i made or spent so much time messing with some of the things that i mess with but anyway we're going to move on today but I just want to let you know that I appreciate you. If you have subscribed to my channel, I appreciate it. And I thank you for coming on here every time that I put out a video. I appreciate you watching it. But before we go into how to be intentional, uh, I want to share a little something with you. It's a very touchy subject. It's a very touchy subject. And I'm not, I'm not there yet. You know, I, I battle with it every day. But it's something that I feel like that we as Christians even, we don't want to address it. And, but, um, and it's about our eating habits. It is our eating habits about how our body is the temple. It's God's temple. And so many of us, I know I did, I did. So many of us is carrying um, sickness that we don't have to carry, all because we will not change the way we eat, we won't get up, we won't do any kind of exercise. And again, I'm not one of these health nuts. I'm not one of these that every time you look at me, I'm going to be trying to tell you, you don't need to eat that. You need to be eating this, eating that, taking that vitamin. I'm not one of those people because... I don't like being done that way, and I'm not going to do nobody else that way. But I tell you what God revealed to me, and he told me. He said, uh, people are addicted to food just like people that are addicted to alcohol. Just like people are addicted to drugs, to meth, to pain pills. People are addicted to food. And certain kind of foods. Now, we got to eat. We know we got to eat. But I can tell you that we could live on a lot less than what we eat. And I, I'm going to tell you something that I pray and decree and declare every day. It's not easy. But every day that I pray, I speak to my stomach and I speak to my taste buds. And I tell my stomach. You're not going to control me today. You're not going to control me. We're going to eat to live and not live to eat. And then I'll tell my taste buds the same thing. Taste buds, you're not going to control me today. We're going to eat to live and not live to eat. I'm not going to eat, eat my emotions. I'm not, going to let, I'm not going to do mindless eating or emotional eating because you know what? I did that. And you know what it caused me? It caused me to gain about 50 pounds. It caused my knee to hurt like crazy. But I can tell you, for about two years, 2018, 2019, uh, no, 2019 and 2020, 
God began to deal with me because I, I had lost some weight before, like in 2016, 2015, 2016, I lost about 60 pounds. And I felt so good. I felt so much better. But it was a diet. It was a diet. It wasn't a change in my lifestyle. It was a diet. And just soon as I started eating the other food again, it started slowly creeping back up on me. And so, you know, before I knew it, I had done gained about 40. Well, about 40 of those pounds, of those 60 pounds. I had done gained 40 of that back. And my knee was hurting. I was uh, kind of like, uh, like wobbling last year because I was having to yield to this knee. I was going to bed with it hurting. And I thought, Lord, I don't want to have to have knee surgery. And I just began, and God said, if you will get that weight off of you, I will touch your knee. Your knee will heal on its own, basically. And so I said, okay, God, okay. So I started doing this research. I started researching the keto, the keto lifestyle. And, uh, and I'm not uh, like strict, strict keto. I wasn't when I started. But I started December the 31st getting away from a lot of pasta, starches, stuff that would inflame and cause inflammation around my knee and cause me to hurt. And guys, I didn't know this was going to happen. But ever since December the 31st, I have not had not one heartburn. And I was basically having to eat Tums almost three or four times a week. At least three or four times a week, I would have to eat two or three times before I'd go to bed because I could feel it in my throat, you know, and I could get just swollen. I have not had to do that since I changed my eating habits. But guys, I'm telling you, food is an addiction, just like alcohol. But we don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about that, you know. But even when I was heavier, I knew that I was doing wrong. I knew that God was, uh, he was pricking my heart and telling me, you're not eating right. You're overeating, and that's why you're gaining the weight you're gaining, and that's why you're hurting in your knee, and that's why you're hurting, and that's why you're having the, the indigestion that you're having, you know. So I was like, okay, God, uh, okay. So we are almost 11 months into this year, and I've lost about 53, 54 pounds. My husband's lost about 60-something pounds. He, he didn't even really intend to lose weight, but he was saying that God was dealing with him too. And as I began to share with him things about what we should be eating and what things that we were eating that was hurting our body, you know, it became a revelation to him as well. And he got right on board with me. And he said, whatever you fix, I'll eat it. And he started cutting back. And he started getting away from the sugar. And guys, I'm going to tell you something. My husband ate, three, ate sweets three times a day. After breakfast, after dinner, and after supper, he had some kind of snack every day. Uh, if he, Unless he was fasting. Now, if he was fasting, he didn't. You know, because he didn't eat. But if he wasn't fasting, he'd have a snack after breakfast, a snack after lunch, and a snack after supper. So this was very, very challenging for him. It was an addiction. It was an addiction. But now, you know, there for probably about six or seven months, neither one of us had anything like that. We just did not eat it at all. But then a little bit alone, you know, now, now he treats himself on Sunday. He allows himself to have one snack on Sunday, you know. But through the week, we eat sugar-free Jello. We eat strawberries, berries, blueberries. Uh, we try to eat the natural sweets, the natural fruit. Uh, we don't even eat a lot of the grapes, grapes and bananas. I've just started, just started bringing them back into our diet, but just you know, very uh, portion size, you know, maybe a half a banana, you know, or just a handful of grapes or something like that. Because those things are full 
of natural sugar, which is full of carbs, which will cause your body to get inflamed. But anyway, guys, I just want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today. There is a, there is a, you know, there's a spirit of gluttony, just like there's an addiction for alcohol and drugs and meth and pain pills and pornography, pornography. You know, we'll put people in hell over those things. We'll put our hand up against them or, you know, or it's, even that they get on Facebook or they get on media or they stand up in the church and they say, God delivered me from alcohol. I've been clean for two years. And oh, God is good. God is good. But somebody stands up and says, God delivered me from gluttony. God touched me and he helped me and he showed me that I was hurting my body and I was addicted to uh, these kind of foods. But God delivered me. And I prayed and he helped me. And then people be like, oh my goodness, I do that. You know, I eat like that. You know, but I'm telling you guys, this it's just me. I hope, I hope that I can help you. I hope that I'm pricking your heart. That you will let God talk to you. If you are overweight, if you are hurting physically in your body, that you would talk to God about it. I mean, if you can decree and declare and get up and pray every day about the spiritual side of life, you can get up every day and try to take care of this body just as well. I believe God requires us to. I really do. I really do. But he, He's so merciful, guys. He is so merciful and He gives us grace. He allows us so much grace. But every week, I'm going to move on here, but every week I've been reading out of How to Be Intentional with Your Words. This is my second devotional. How to Be Prosperous was my first devotionals. These books are on Amazon. And if you watch me any at all, I have a calendar and that I have been doing this. My calendars are $15, uh, but if you buy these for if you buy these two, you can get the calendar for $10. So it would help me out, you know, and bless you as well. But every week I've been reading out of How to Be Intentional. So we're going to move on and read Day 11. A word, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Mm, Proverbs 25 and 11. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. My, my. I love the way that God uses simple items and objects to help us relate to his word. Apples are a food or a fruit. Talk about food. And gold is very expensive and beautiful to look upon. Pictures of silver are referring to a vessel, a container. Notice how it says the golden apples are in the picture. I can see that silver container with those beautiful apples of gold. I picture it being a centerpiece on a table. God clearly expresses through the Bible how important our words are. Saying the right words at the right time is priceless. But saying the right words at the wrong time can be detr detrimental. They can be the right words, but you can say them at the wrong time or say them in the wrong spirit, and they will not accomplish what they need to accomplish. We have all seen this happen. Someone says something that may be true, but it was said at the wrong time or in the wrong spirit. I've been guilty of speaking without thinking. I also have had someone to speak to me harshly, and the feeling that I got was not good. It weighs on your heart and your mind, and sometimes even for years. Let's make sure we are weighing our words before we speak. I can tell you that there are things that people have said, and I know without a doubt there's things that I have said to people that rose over in their mind sometimes, and I say, God, forgive me. Forgive me of that foolishness and that ignorance at that time. Because I know there are statements and things that has been said to me that I, every now and then, I'm reminded of 
what they said, and I believe the spirit that they said it, and the spirit that was behind what they said was not good. But anyway, I forgave them, and I forgive them, and God knows I do. But it don't stop it from coming to your mind. So I challenge you today, be careful what you say. What you're saying may be the truth, but say it at the right time and say it in the right spirit. Because what good is it if it's not accepted and if it's the devil uses it to hurt the people instead of helping them? So here's the prayer. God, help me to be sensitive to other people's feelings. Help me to speak the right words at the right time. And when you instruct me to admonish a brother or sister, let me put myself in their place, like your word instructs. Let me speak with grace and mercy. Let my words be seasoned with tenderness. You have given me the tongue of the learned that I may know how to speak a word in due season to those who are weary. Help me to consider the person and the circumstance that is surrounding the issue before I speak. Thank you, God, for giving me the wisdom to know how to be intentional with my words. My goodness, what a word today. That's, you know, just like even the video, the starting of this video, of how our body is the temple, is God's temple. And He expects us to treat it right. He really does. But anyway, you, as you'll see here, Oh, man, I don't know why it does that. I'm trying to get it to where you can see. It's way back here. <laughs> but you can see I, this, this, is a, this is a devotional prayer journal. You can journal in this book as well. I have some little call to action questions, statements, or something like that that you can write. You can, uh, you know, you can answer these questions, or you can just write what's on your heart that day. That's one good thing about it. It's your book. You know, you can do what you want to with it. But guys, I tell you, God is so good to us. God is so, so good to us. And let's don't waste. Let's don't waste 2020. Even if you had loss. Even if you lost a companion. If you lost a child. If you lost a parent. God, God is there for you. And he's going to see us through this. Grieve if you have to. But after you get through grieving, lean into God. Lean into him and let him help you through this. Guys, I want y'all to have a great week. Have a great day. Uh, if you have service tonight or Bible study, be sure that you're faithful to your home church. Go to church this Sunday. If, you're, if your church is having church, you know, and they've kind of let up a little bit on, you know, the uh, coming in, and if you still have to wear a mask and keep your distance, go be in the presence of God's people. It would really help you. I know it would. It would really help you because it's the devil's job to keep us isolated and keep us pushed back. But I want to encourage you today to you know draw close to God more than anything draw close to God but stay connected to your church family don't allow the enemy to push you into the corner don't allow him to isolate you and beat you down even more get connected to somebody reach out to somebody go to the church if you can and be close and be in fellowship with your church family because God intended us to be like that he intended us to be connected with other people because when Adam when he created Adam he even said in the beginning it wasn't good for man to be alone and he created him a helpmeet he created a, a woman he created Eve to be Adam's helpmate so he did not intend for us to be alone it was his intention for us to have relationships with other people and re the main relationship is with him so y'all have a great week. Have a great weekend. Remember, subscribe to my channel, like it, share it, comment on it, and help me get this content out there. And don't forget to go to church this weekend. If you can, get out and go to church.